Here we are in our garage. Let's see what we're rolling out today. Looks like we got ourselves a miniature Hyundai, the Venue SUV. I had a 2020 model last year. I really liked it. Good vehicle for the money. So I told them to send me another when we get a chance. So I guess they did. Looks pretty good with this bright red paint. Let's take a look at the price tag before we continue on. The base price of a venue starts around $18,000. This one's the upgrade to SCL, so it costs just a wee bit more. But you get more standard equipment. As you can see, And yes, we did get some options here, although I think it's ridiculous to be charged $155 for carpeted floor mats. Oh, come on, we've got to pay extra for a floor now. Shouldn't that be standard? There's your total tab. I think just about anybody can afford this. As a bonus, this is made in the high-quality Korean plant, which is why it's screwed together so well. If I'm buying a Korean car, I want one made in Korea. If I'm buying a Japanese car, I want one made in Japan. That's the way I look at it. I want to get my money's worth. If you're looking for a good economy, we also tested the Hyundai Elantra Hybrid. Got some very good fuel economy off that. We'll have a link for that video at the end of this video. Just go to the end, click and watch. Same with the Hyundai Santa Fe. So you have two more Hyundais to watch when you go to the end of this video. One of the first things we do when we get a vehicle is take the headlights out in the dark and see what they do. Looks like one big bulb and one little one on the other side. It's dark enough. Let's see what these lights do. And I see they're mounted lower than normal. But still pretty bright. Here are the LEDs on the rear. Here's what you see when you put the transmission in reverse. Not the highest resolution I've ever seen, but more than adequate for any use. This is the optional 8-inch screen. I don't know what you get if you get the lower cost model. Probably a 6-incher. I'd have to look that up. And this is pretty basic transportation, so not too many lights to see in the cabin. Just your basic stuff. All right, the headlights. Low beam and a wall 100 feet away. Very bright, good height, good spread. Excellent, go to high beam. Certainly strong in the middle. Here we have the high beams on a fence 80 yards away, building 130 yards away. Lights up pretty good, good low beam. Does reach out just barely. These are pretty good lights, no complaints. And I see our neighbors decided to move and leave their stuff. How nice. Let's have a yard sale. Anybody need a mattress? Another thing we check, want to see if there is a spare tire in the back. A lot of vehicles don't come with those anymore. They say they do it to save weight, but they really do it to save money. Yes, we do. Hey, there's a lot of room under here, too. You can almost double your storage space. Good place to put the owner's manual so you have more room in the glove box. Just a note. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Ah, that's better. Got more room. There's only one engine offered, a tiny 121 horsepower, four. Yep, that's all we get. Rate right 30 MPG in the city and 33 on the highway. There was a six-speed manual transmission offered last year. They did away with it this year. If you'd like to shift for yourself, sorry guys. At least if you like using a clutch. If you watch my videos, you know I prefer a real transmission, not those horrible CVTs we get in small economy cars. 
This is sort of a CVT. It's called the IVT, Intelligent Variable Transmission. It's programmed to simulate the normal gears you would get in a normal transmission. And it works pretty good. Otherwise, the mechanicals are pretty much the same down in there as other CVTs. But this is far, far more pleasant to use. So I'm not going to complain. It's got a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. So don't worry about it going out anytime soon. Motor train was bitching because this is not offered in all-wheel drive. you got to be kidding me. A little 121 horsepower does not need the drag of all-wheel drive. So if you were going to complain that the car accelerates slow like they were. Two-wheel drive only, folks. Unless you live where there's a lot of snow or rain, you don't need all-wheel drive anyway. One thing I like right off the bat, a real honest-to-goodness emergency brake, manual emergency brake. Not that electronic garbage they try to pawn on with Sonates. Yeah, it takes up a little bit of room. They could put it on the floor if you don't want to take up room, but give me a manual emergency brake any day of the week. Electronic brakes are junk. There is a drive mode button. Normal, snow, or sport. I love the climate controls. Three simple knobs, a few buttons on the knobs. Doesn't get any easier than this. The info screen's rather large for a small vehicle like this. Very simple, excellent gauge cluster. Sure, I'm getting 29.1 MPG in city driving. Can't complain about that. We take it out on the freeway later on the video see what we do there. As far as the cabin quality, the people at Motor Trend were bitching left and right about the so-called cheap plastics using this vehicle and look it's nothing fancy in here but I don't really see a problem especially considering the price. I've seen a lot of more expensive German cars that were worse. These cloth seats are very nice, very comfortable. Yeah, it's a little cramped in the second row seating, but we're not driving from Los Angeles to New York in a Hyundai Venue in our way. It's a small vehicle. What do you want? One thing I've noticed, the sun visor on the driver's side slides back and forth to keep the sun out of your face. Which is very important because it's trying to get in my face, but the one on the passenger side does not slide back and forth. That's kind of weird. Either that or somebody super glued it shut, because I've tugged and tugged on this, and it will not slide back and forth at all. Odd. Oh well, that's the passenger's problem, not mine. I'm the driver. First half of the video show and tell is over. Second half, let's take this out and do some driving. If you're paying attention on the price sheet, these are 17-inch wheels. The base vehicle gets 15 inches. I'm told this makes the ride a bit stiffer than normal, but we'll find out real quick. As we're doing all my videos, we're going to take some slow speed humps. See how the suspension performs on impact, number one. Not too bad. Number two. Number three, and the nasty one. Yeah, I felt that one, but I would expect to. This power steering is okay in the city driving, but it's very, very dead. has no feel or feedback. And rather loose, like a big blob of rubber. You get used to it after a while, but not very impressive. As you can imagine, acceleration, well, you're not going to melt the tires, but put in the sport mode, and it's peppy enough. We're going to take this little rig out on the freeway, see how it performs along highway trips. On the positive side, the wind noise is a lot lower than I expected, and the suspension is a lot more comfortable than I expected two positive features thus far along with these comfortable seats. 
On the drawback, we do have some strong crosswinds today and this loose steering isn't helping much. Constantly correcting the wheel to stay in a straight line. Not a deal killer, just a minor annoying thing you have to put up with. Get used to it after a while. Alright, let's pull over and see what the MPG reading is. I was driving pretty fast too. Had my foot buried on the pedal, so I'm not expecting much. Here are the LEDs on the rear. Here's what you see when you put the transmission in reverse. Not the highest resolution I've ever seen, but more than adequate for any use. Well, there you go. Looks like a pretty good figure to me. I think it's a bit more than they claim, too. We're going to rack up a return trip. This time I'll try to drive a bit slower. Maybe we can bump up the numbers even more. We'll find out soon enough. Don't go away. This entire time I've been fighting 15 mile per hour winds, really pushing this vehicle all over the place, even the big trucks are wobbling all over the place, so I'm pushing all this there. I don't think the fuel economy is going to be that great. We'll see. It's pretty nasty out there at the moment. Well, 31 MPG, but when you have a 15 mile per hour wind going west and you're driving east, well, that's a lot of pressure, so actually it's not a bad figure considering the conditions. Time to do my routine ranch patrol. Got to stop by the ranch house to get some supplies. Yeah, I know, I need to put a roof on that someday. Been saying that for years. This vehicle has enough ground clearance to be taken off-road. Of course, without all-wheel drive, you don't want to do too much of that in sand or mud or snow. The advantage of a tiny vehicle like this, you can squeeze in narrow roads. You can't go on bigger vehicles. Ranch Patrol is over. It's time to wrap up this video. So what do I think of this little Hyundai venue? I think it's a very, very nice car for the money. Very well built. Great warranty. Decent fuel economy. Thumbs up for me. Here are these two other Hyundai vehicles we've driven. Just go to the end, click and watch. We're at the end already, so stand by and do it.